Triceratops, the three-horned dinosaur. Reminiscent of a large rhinoceros, this guy, alongside T-Rex, has stolen the hearts of many a child. Weighing between 6 to 12 tons and with a body length of 8 meters, this late Cretaceous idol was quite formidable. And who could forget those patented meter-long horns or that massive frill found out behind the Triceratops' head? Images of Triceratops ramming Tyrannosaurus with its horns probably helped popularize this giant jouster. As you can see in this picture, fossils of Triceratops' skull often show bite marks and evidence of other wounds inflicted by Tyrannosaurus. In fact, the competition between these two species was so ferocious that in 1996, paleontologist Peter Dodson published a book which revealed that a Tyrannosaurus may have been stabbed by Triceratops' horns, seriously wounding it. Just as wildebeests and antelopes sometimes defend themselves from predators with their horns, Triceratops might have also resisted predator attacks with its bamboo spear-like horns. Also, recently discovered Triceratops fossils bear markings of being stabbed by other Triceratops. From this, we can infer that groups of Triceratops may have fought for dominance amongst themselves, just like modern-day deer or water buffalo. Now, wait a minute. If that's the purpose of Triceratops' horns, what about its frill? Because of that frill, Triceratops had to lug around a 450 kilogram cranium. Why did they have that cumbersome frill anyway? Was it to show off? We're about to unravel the ancient web of secrets around Triceratops' frill. Here we go. The year was 1908. Yale University professor Richard Lowell had just published a paper which attempted to reveal the true purpose behind Triceratops' frill. He hypothesized that the frill would have made it easier for the Ceratopsian to chew its food as the frill was connected to its jaw muscles. And as additional evidence, he noted that chameleons, whose jaw muscles connect to the back of their necks, look like Triceratops. However, it was eventually discovered that the jaw muscles hadn't attached to the frill, meaning that Professor Lowell's theory was a swing and a miss. For a spell afterward, it was proposed that frills had evolved on ceratopsids like Triceratops to protect their necks from predator attacks. This hypothesis, however, was not accepted by the greater surrounding community. And if you were to take a look at the frills these ceratopsidae had, you might find yourself agreeing with them. Styracosaurus, Protoceratops, and Chasmosaurus, like most ceratopsids, displayed gapped frills which were rather delicate. In the end, the notion that these frills were meant to protect attacked against serious attacks just didn't prove no. credible. However, given the fact that Triceratops' frills were filled with bone, they probably would have still made great defensive tools. As we saw with the other Ceratopsids, however, it would be difficult to say that their frills evolved specifically for defensive purposes. This was the general state of things when, in 1978, Professor Wheeler came up with the thermoregulation hypothesis. Analyzing Triceratops' frill, we find clear markings of where blood veins had flowed. The theory asserts that Triceratops used its frill to regulate its body temperature, much like Stegosaurus. By circulating blood through its frill, it could use sunlight to warm up and control the temperature of its whole body. However, this theory also had its fair share of flaws. First of all, even for a creature like Stegosaurus, it took quite a few plates to maintain its body temperature. So it didn't make much sense that Triceratops, or other Ceratopsids for that matter, could control their body temperatures with a single frill. Not to mention that if they had been used for thermoregulation, we would expect Ceratopsid frills to appear at least somewhat similar. But Protosaurus, Staurocosaurus, Centrosaurus, and Chasmosaurus each had frills that were notably different from one another. Also, the frills seem to be decorated too extravagantly to have been used for thermoregulatory purposes. So, where did these large frills come from, then? Some of you may have noticed that earlier we used the word decorated. That's right. Give a warm welcome to the courtship display theory. This theory was first proposed by Professor Leo Davitashvili in 1961, before Professor Wheeler introduced the thermoregulation theory. Although it did not receive much attention at first, this theory has recently begun to garner the support of many paleontologists. Similar to modern peacock plumes or iguana dewlaps, ceratopsid frills may have been used to attract mates, or even show their mood by flowing blood through the connected veins, changing the frill's color. 
Not only that, but in 2005, Professor Mark Goodwin pointed to a juvenile Triceratops' frill as evidence that perhaps these frills weren't only used to attract mates, but also to help distinguish different species. And we eventually learned that each ceratopsid's frill is different in appearance. The possibility arose that maybe ceratopsids use their frills to distinctify members of their own species as well. Just like how each zebra has a different set of stripes, and how each human has their own unique complexion. This shows why the frill theories about courtship and species distinction are widely accepted by the paleontologist community. They do a good job of explaining their glamour and variety. However, even if that were the case, how could we reduce all of the frills down to a singular function? Especially when considering that Triceratops had a frill sturdier and more powerful than any other Ceratopsid, we can safely assume it was applied defensively. Paleontology professor Robert T. Bacher proposed that Triceratops' large horn and frill co-evolved alongside Tyrannosaurus in order to better resist the apex predator. Perhaps it was the utility of these formidable frills that allowed Triceratops to prosper throughout the Cretaceous period of the Mesozoic era. Triceratops, our fantastic fantastically frilled friend of the late Cretaceous period. While we may not have given them a second thought before, don't those frills look a bit… sophisticated now? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you.